Caller, you're live on the air. Thanks so much for calling back. Thanks for your patience. What's up? Hey, thanks for having me, man. It's uh, Richard from Georgia. Richard, what's going on, man? Glad to have you. I think that there may be something that a lot of progressives or people that are supporting Hillary Clinton aren't seeing that that can have a lot of repercussions down the road if she gets elected. Go for it. Let's and that is that right now, you know, in the past seven years that Obama has been president, uh, up to this point right now, um, Republicans control, you know, mm-hmm. 28 state legislatures, and Dems only control about seven. Then there's like there's about 31 Republican governors, and then they hold more seats in the Senate than in the House. And I believe that's mainly because of all the vitriol they've been able to spew over the past seven years, and that has, uh, you know, kind of brought out more uh, more Republican voters than it has Democratic voters because President Obama hasn't been able to do all that he's wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And then if Hillary's going to hold on to that mantle, hold on to that um, that legacy, the amount of vitriol she's going to get mm-hmm. isn't going to change. Exactly. It may even increase. And that's going to lessen our ability to gain um, state seats and governor seats and seats in Congress. And if we don't have uh, a revolutionary candidate like Bernie Sanders, that will inspire hope and will inspire people to come out mm-hmm. and support some of these lower ballot uh, candidates, then I believe this needs to be almost a complete Republican takeover uh, very soon. Hmm. I think that's a good observation, man. Um, I actually I actually agree with you um, anecdotally, and then I, I want to say just logically, right? Logically, what you're saying is sound, right? There's this expectation that Hillary Clinton is going to be able to accomplish things that that Bernie Sanders won't be able to accomplish because for some reason the Republican Congress is going to oppose Bernie Sanders more than they oppose Hillary Clinton. Or – the reverse of that, that Hillary Clinton is such a uh, such a statesman or stateswoman that she's going to be able to get the Republican Party to work and we will get stuff done. And it's like there's this blank spot, this intentional blank spot, mind you, where they don't remember Benghazi. And the only person that they hate as much, if not more than President Obama, is Hillary Clinton. And the same intransigence that President Obama faced, Hillary Clinton is going to face it that much more. They're going to spend the entire time of a Hillary Clinton presidency trying to impeach her over emails, trying to impeach her over Benghazi. It will never go away. Not because whether or not you think it's valid, right? It's whether or Mm -hmm. not it actually happened, this is the this is the party. And so why would we put up somebody who's promising concessions, promising that all we're going to do is we're going to work and we're going to get done the things that we can get done when she has to face people who would not work with her any more than they would work with Vol- uh, Voldemort. I can't even say his name. <laughs> my, my tongue is tied. The, the, uh, the, the, the bourbon has gotten to me. But they don't want to work with Hillary. And so we're missing that. Now, here's the other thing anecdotally. Before I actually considered Bernie Sanders myself, I was in this depressed state of politics where I didn't even want to talk about politics because it felt inevitable that Hillary Clinton was going to be uh, it was going to be Hillary Clinton versus Jeb Bush. And I was like, you know what? Forget about it. I don't care. I don't really care. Now, that's anecdotal for me, but there are so many people that I talk to on a regular basis from my family to people in the community here in Boston to people across the country through social media who felt the same exact way. And without that enthusiasm to actually get people up for a reason to go vote, then you're going to exactly what you said. There will be no down ballot successes because who is really enthusiastic about Hillary Clinton except for people who are a part of the establishment or people, honestly, let's just call a spade a spade, who are excited about voting for the first woman president. I personally would be excited about voting for the first woman president, but Hillary Clinton was not the one that actually made me excited about doing it. It was Elizabeth Warren. Caller, I appreciate that, man. Do you got anything else? Um, No, I I mean, I agree with pretty much all you said. I mean, um, I mean, it's amazing that we were able to have America's first black president, and it would be amazing for us to have our first woman president. And when mm-hmm. Elizabeth Warren runs, maybe that will be the case. But um, <laughs> I would give you but, an applause there, man. <laughs> George is in the those house. Things, those things aren't going to matter if we have this, if we continue to have obstructionism. So, I mean, it would be amazing, but 
I don't see her getting anything done either. Dude, I, I, I did not hear, you said Georgia, and I'm like, I don't hear a southern accent, but you said about three words in there that sounded <laughs> a little southern and reminded me of home. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually from Florida. <laughs> Do you know where, uh, you know where Fernandina Beach is right there, right on the, on, the, on, the, on the northern border of Florida, southern border of, of Georgia? Um, I yeah, there I, think, for, I think I've been there enough, young. Know? Yeah, yeah, so I, I know the South well, man. Thanks so much for the call, man. Glad you're tuning in. All right. All Thank right. you. All right, I just want to make sure I got him on there because he waited He waited for about 10 minutes there. Um, let me say this um, to PJ's con uh, article and question of uh, – actually, let me go to Solomon. Solomon, you had a great title for it where it's like an entitlement. Um, what, was, what was that you call that entire paradigm where um, they feel like they can critique but they shouldn't be critiqued? What was that? <laughs> Man, you <laughs> – you got to pay attention, dude. You got to no, I was paying attention right when you started saying that. The hangouts went. Eh, 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 eh. Okay, all right. You're making me look bad on my own show. Um, no, <laughs> you described. You gave it a title. What what PJ was describing about people who feel entitled to be able to critique and criticize, but feel like they should not be criticized. You you had a great title. Maybe. I oh. Know. Oh, I forgot what I said, but it was really good. I should write that down. You should write it down. We'll rewind it. If anybody remembers, uh, put it in the chat, and, and we'll rewind it. This is how we can help conservatives see it, because I'm, I'm going to up the ante. It's the same exact paradigm that we see with Hillary Clinton supporters right now. It's mm -hmm. the same thing that they want. They want to be able to criticize Bernie Sanders. They want to be able to call him a racist. They want to be able to say he's a misogynist. They want to be able to say that he's weak on gun control. They want to make him seem like he's a socialist. You know that he's this that he's this nefarious, evil old white man who can't connect with minorities and has no chance of winning whatsoever. But if we dare, brought the equivalent opposition to them then all of a sudden, we're not playing fair. We're not playing nice. Oh, you're being so misogynistic. Or you're being so this and you're being so that. So it's the same exact thing. Now, if you want to up the ante a little more, I could apply to Black Lives Matter, but but I, I've given them enough hell this oh, week. Oh, you mean like right-wing entitlement and then victimhood? Like in this... <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it, right? Wing yeah. entitlement and, 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 and victimhood. Um, and, and we see it across the board. Now, to a certain extent, I think it's human nature. I think we're all capable of doing it. Um, but if you're not introspective, if that's – I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but who cares? It's Friday night and whatever. But it's not Friday. If, if you don't, oh, it's not Friday. If you don't have any introspection, then you won't be able to see yourself doing this and call yourself on it. Uh, so I think it was actually a great article, PJ. Uh, everyone, I, I want to thank the Progressive Army for joining me tonight. A, a good example of what you just said would be like at a conversation I had with like this, that Hillary bought um, a Tumblr account I may have told you about before, where the, they're in the whole medical records where Bernie should release his medical records. This is a perfect example of that criticism, but immediate victimhood when you respond is they kept saying, well, Bernie might have some health effect, and then when he released it and there was essentially nothing, they were like, well, we need to know anything that was wrong with him, and I brought up, well, if we're just going to go down this road, Hillary literally had a stroke like three years ago. Why is it? Why is going through the very minutia of anything that could be wrong with Bernie? Uh, but but, we, but then, when, I, when I brought that up, oh, no, 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 you're not allowed to do that. You, you, I'm, a, I'm a Republican now because uh, I brought up that the fact that she had a stroke when you, when you keep to bring up the fact that Bernie has literally almost nothing on his record. Right, that just because he's an old age, like old man, right? You know mm -hmm. what you do, and. and